Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Miked Up Podcast. I'm really excited about being in the podcast world, if you can't tell. And I'm really looking forward to working with a lot of great people throughout this venture. But I can tell you that it wouldn't be possible without some of our great sponsors. And one of them is Jersey Joe's Boardwalk Cafe. Jersey Joe's presents food that is mind-blowing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's all at affordable prices, and it's made healthy. You can check out more information on Jersey Joe's by by visiting them on Facebook. Just search Jersey Joe's Boardwalk Cafe. Their Facebook page has their hours, their menu, and anything else that you're looking for from Jersey Joe's. He's considered one of the most recognizable voices in area racing. And now, Mike Bats is bringing his love and knowledge for the sport to the podcast world. This is Mike Up. Okay, so they shot me with a sedative and calmed me down a little bit and gave me the opportunity to talk to you a little bit more logically about what Mike Up's going to be. First and foremost, our guest on the opening show is Devin Harron. I'll touch on it a little bit later of why that's really important to me. But the breakdown of what the podcast is going to be. Uh, first and foremost, I'm really excited about the opportunity, as I mentioned in the opening. But I don't want to be the same as every other podcast. I know when I see that there's a new podcast, I'm excited, but I also think, man, there's another hour and a half of my week that I got to try to juggle to figure out if I want to listen to that show or not. This one I want to keep short. I want to keep this podcast to a mowing of the grass or a drive to work. That way you spend that time listening, enjoying it once a week or maybe bi-weekly. And it just, it's kind of a, a simpler show because I don't want to compete with the lowdown and dirties. I don't want to compete with the racers roundtables. I don't want to compete with anybody, really. I just want to have some fun doing this, give some notoriety to the people that deserve it, and give you, the race fans, a little bit of insight that you might not get normally. Um, so often, we talk to drivers only in victory lane, or we might get a snippet somewhere else. I want to talk to drivers about the things that are on their minds. I want to talk to racing promoters. I want to talk to as many people as we can, just trying to touch on some different things. Um, this podcast is built mainly for the fans, especially the fans of Linda Speedway are going to enjoy it. I know I'm excited about it because I've wanted to do this for a long time. I've talked often about it with people, but it's never quite come to this point. And uh, what I don't want is for this show to just become one of those shows that comes and goes. So often these shows start, they're thriving for a month, and then they fall, and then that's it. They're in the garbage, and they never come back. I can't guarantee that we're going to be a weekly show. There's a lot of news out there, so there's always news to cover. I just can't guarantee that I'm going to always have the time to cover it. Kind of juggling a busy schedule, but that's no excuse. We still need to get a good show out there, and I want to do that as often as possible. I want to take a second to talk about another one of our sponsors. Okay, hold on. It's the last one of the day. It's the Jesus Race Team. There's two things that I really appreciate about the Jesus Race Team. Number one, their meaning. And number two, the fact that Bruce, Becky, and the rest of the team don't try to shove their message down our throats. They just come to the track, they race, they do things for the racing community. Is it outreach? An opportunity for you to see the Jesus Race Team name and know it's there for you if you need it. A quick message, email to Bruce, and you have the opportunity to have some support. So I just encourage you, they're on Facebook now, their website, the Jesus Race Team, if you Google it or Bing it, it's gonna come right up. Find them on Facebook. Bruce is doing a video blog now, so you don't even have to read anything. You can just sit there and listen to him talk, and I, I really encourage you to get behind it because they've done a lot for me personally, Linda Speedway, and the racing community, and they deserve that opportunity for you to at least take a couple seconds and hear what they're all about. So why Devin Harron? When I was approached about doing this podcast and when I started talking to people, um, Devin was kind of a logical choice because he was the 270 champion and he was struggling at the beginning of the season. But after the interview was done and I had sent it in and they were piecing this thing all together, um, I started to think about what really that meant to me because to be honest with you, there's a good chance without Devin, this podcast might not be happening. And you say, well, how's that? 
Last year, we had those weeks where the racetrack just wasn't good, and we were struggling with the rain. We would get it at the worst possible time, and one week I decided I'm just going to put my heart and soul into this. I'm going to go out. I'm going to not spend any time at home. I'm going to neglect my wife and all my duties because the racetrack needs to be better this week, and I did. I put in about 35 hours that week on the racetrack, about seven hours a day, just grading dirt, moving it around. I talked to Fred Putney. I talked to Alan Kreitzer. I talked to everybody that I knew that could help me. And the track was in decent shape. And then it poured down rain about 10 o'clock Thursday night and ruined everything. And I was the most miserable SOB for the next couple of hours that anybody has probably ever been around in their lives. Everybody was coming and they were saying, I hope the track's going to be better. And I was thinking in the back of my mind, it's not going to be because we had two inches of rain last night. And then and the racing started and lo and behold the track was bad and everybody was saying you need to fix it you need to fix it and I was saying I can't fix it there's no way to fix it now it will take too much time time we don't have and I became probably the most nine to five ish I've ever been behind a microphone and if you go back and you listen to Jim Murdoch's video I am terrible I don't want to be there in fact I think I would have rather been anywhere else in the world than at a racetrack and especially at Linda's Speedway. Come 270 feature time, Devin gets to victory lane. I'm in victory lane with Devin and his grandfather and their crew and Devin is just pumped with emotion and right in the middle of the interview he starts talking about his family and he starts to break down and he starts talking about his crew and he breaks down a little bit more and he talks about his grandfather and how hard they've worked. And, I mean, keep in mind, this is when Devin's climbing back into the championship race, back into what they, they kind of let slip away the year before. And he just completely breaks down and says how much it would mean to him to win the title at Linda Speedway. And in an instant, I was back in the game. Because of Devin Heron's emotion in victory lane, I got on the grader that night and I went and did my job. Not because I had to, but because at that point I wanted to for every driver in the pits so that I could experience that moment with them. So inadvertently, Devin Heron really just pumped me that night full of the love for the sport again and gave me the push to do stuff like this, the things that I really enjoy. And um, that's why when I really thought about it, I thought this is a really cool first guest for this show. So without further ado, here's my interview with Devin Harron. Devin, it's been a tough start to the season. What do you guys do to try to rebound tonight? Uh, we just got to keep on ticking. We got to get this uh, bad luck off our shoulders and we get to start clicking together. Um, we've had a really fast car so far this season and we'd like to keep it up. Um, a lot of good competition here and it's going to be a hard job to do. What did you do this week to try to change your luck? Uh, we spent a little longer in the garage this week. Uh, hopefully nothing comes loose and nothing breaks. Last week we had a throttle cable snap. Uh, we were in the lead. I was told that we would possibly win the race if nothing would break. So that was that was a real kick to the butt. Um, yeah, we just got to keep going. The bad luck really sucks. And um, I got my hair cut, so hopefully we shook <laughs> off some of that bad luck. Do you think it has anything, they always say it's hardest after a championship to come back. Um, for your team, the mental mindset, what is that like right now? Uh, we, we don't really look at it like that. We just kind of come here every night and we try and do our best. That's it. We don't, we don't worry about the points or the championship. We just want to be the fastest car every night we are here. And every time we're slow, we always find something to do, speeds us up a little more. And even when we're the quickest car here, there's always ways to get faster. Um, competition stiff and we just keep digging. Although you're a younger guy, you've spent a lot of time in a race car, um, what what do you think that does for you at a time like this when you're trying to kick the bad luck? It's not like this is the first time it's happened. Well, the more important thing about me been racing for so long, I think it's been 13 years now I started out in go-karts is uh, I've had the same one guy with me and that is my grandfather. He helps with me out so much. Um, when it comes to figuring out new setups, new ways to go fast, he's uh, he's always thinking, he's going crazy every night we're here at the track to try and make us faster. So I'd have to say that my grandfather has really kept me grounded over these last 13 years of racing. The one thing I always find interesting with the drivers is what do you do away from the track to try to kind of clear your mind and get away from things? I mean, I'm a, 
if you talk to me, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. Um, I don't really take anything too seriously. So I think that's a big part of what what helps me get through the week. But uh, I also work at a factory too, so there's a lot of stuff going on during the week that keeps my mind off of this. So it all comes together, and we just come back here every Friday night. And we try to do better. When you think about where you want to. Um, be at the end of the season. Do you think championship? There's still a national open title kind of hanging there. You guys got so close a couple years ago, um, and, and just win races. What, what are you What are you trying to picture for the end of your season? Uh, we We don't really look at it at the end of the season. We're just going to take it race by race. Um, it would be very nice to repeat <laughs> the championship, but uh, we're not even thinking about that right now. It's so early on in the season. Um, it would be really nice to get a national championship, too. That's, like, that's been on my head as a driver ever since I got into micros. When you make the jump to Linda Speedway a couple years ago, uh, I was talking to your grandfather this week, and just the, the adjustment race-wise, um, and it seems like you kind of took to the track right away. What do you think accommodates you so well here? Um, I think it's just the experience, the amount of time that we've been here. I mean, we're here every Friday night. We know what the track does. Um, and we just got this car dialed in for this place. It's just, again, we've had a lot of bad luck so far these first two races. Right. So, I mean, I'd really like to get a whole feature in. We haven't even done that this year. So, um, I don't know, man. We're just going to keep going. Bad luck. You can't really do anything about it. We don't wear green. We don't eat <laughs> peanuts. I don't know what we did wrong. Um, but, yeah, we're just going to keep going. Take it race by race. Something that's always cool for the fans is to learn new things about the drivers. What's something that you think would be interesting to the fans that they don't already know about Devin Herring? I think that I can relate to the fans a lot better than a lot of other people because I work third shift, I work in a factory. Um, I feel like a lot of people that are into racing are also into like anything automotive. Um, I love cars even outside the track. Um, just, I don't know. I'm a very outgoing guy. I like to do a lot of different things. I like to play paintball. I play in a roller hockey league. Um, I'm always going to car shows again. So I feel like if anybody ever needs to go up and talk to me, I'm a very easygoing guy. I talk to anybody. I treat everybody the same no matter what. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. One of the cool things that I think of is uh, every week I come and there's this group of people that are here every week with you. Talk a little bit about them and your core group. Oh, man. Um people that we race with here every week are awesome. Um, my girlfriend Cora is in love with dogs. One of our good buddies at the track here just got uh, bribed into buying a golden retriever. So um, it's just like those little things that like we all get along so well. Um, Kyle would get there. I was at his wedding. He invited me to his wedding. Um, Kyle and Kent Weiss were always talking to them. Uh, like I mentioned, I just shaved my head. But uh, Kyle still has a bush yeah. going off the top of his head. He was trying to get me not to shave it off with him. But, uh, I mean, everybody here, it helps when you're here every week and you spend the same time with the same people. So, everybody here, um, we get along really well. And there's always so many things that are going on at night. We still manage to talk to each other. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Always coming up to each other, telling each other what we're doing. I agree. Um, it's just a really fun place to be, Mike. Um. You can't do this without the people that help you. And although the bad luck's been on your shoulders, maybe that'll leave tonight. But just in case it doesn't, who do you need to thank for sponsorship-wise, crew-wise, shop-wise? Oh, stuff? man, I got a long list here, and I'm very uh, thankful for this. But first off, I got my grandfather. He puts in all the work every week. I, I live 35, 40 minutes away from my grandfather. So I try and get up to his place once a week. But it's hard with the work schedule because I'll work, and then I'll go right in right into actual work. And then um, I got Stevie and Ryan. Uh, Stevie also works third shift with me, so he normally goes to work after we're done here on the night. Um, Ryan's been there for the last four or five years with us, and he's awesome. Um, I got my girlfriend here, she shows up every week. Um, I got the guys out at RTS. I got Tompkins Insurance. Um, Zero Gravity Designs, Momentum Racing Suspensions, um, The Fastener Place, and a big thank you to Kim's Creations. 
Uh, they did an awesome job on the car this year. Pearl looks very good. Yep, and uh, Statement Apparel for making these shirts for us. And Mark D. Hinkle Landscaping. There's a bunch of them. I'm sorry if I missed any of you. But uh, you know who you are if you hear this. Uh, big thank you to all of you. We really appreciate it. Oh, who's your tire Mid-Atlantic? Awesome guys. Love them. Um, and we got to thank you guys, the track crew, for helping us get in the track really nice every night. You can be part of the show and give us your feedback by following Mike on Twitter at Michael Betts. You can find previously recorded shows on Mike's page found on lindasspeedway.com. Thanks for tuning in to Mike'd Up. This was a Mike Company Motorsports production.